Well, good afternoon to everyone. Um, hope everybody's staying warm and safe with the snow everywhere in the Northwest. But uh, gosh, it's it's uh, amazing to think that we're already halfway through conference, you know, meeting each of the opponents that we've met and uh, it's going really fast. Uh, obviously, we are disappointed in our play um, this past weekend. And, um, you know, a big thing for us is, is we're trying to get back into a rhythm offensively. And we haven't been able to do that for a few games. But, uh, you know, credit to our players. They've been in the gym working out a lot extra, and the staff's been working hard with them. And I think it's just a matter of time before we kind of get that rhythm back. And when we do, then we won't have to count on our defense as much as that we had to count on it to, to create offense. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Denise with PacSquad.org, and we're just doing a profile on Jasmine. Uh -huh. So um, if you could just briefly describe how you've seen her grow both on and off the court over yeah. the past four years that she's been here with you. Yeah, Jasmine's a senior in the program, and um, she's played a tremendous amount of minutes. She's on pace to uh, be top ten, and in, in she already is in scoring, uh, rebounds, steals, assists. And I think that uh, Jasmine, both on and off the court, has grown up immensely. I think that, you know, like most young people, it, it's uh, each, each year it's a new maturation process for them and a new challenge. And um, you know, coming from, from Berkeley and, and coming out to a small town like Pullman, that was a huge adjustment for her. I think that she's really fallen in love with Pullman, the people here, and really treasures the relationships that she's been able to create over the last four years, uh, both, you know, with academics and basketball. And, and I think the other thing is community. I mean, she is somebody who really spends an enormous amount of time out, in the, especially with the youth in uh, Pullman and, and helping them, uh, you know, just to, to grow a little bit as people from her life experiences. Um, basketball wise I think that uh, you know this has been her best year by far on um, being consistent a as a player I think that each practice she goes in in there thinking that not only does she have to continue to improve but she's got to be a good leader for her uh, for her teammates because she's a senior now so I think overall you know her maturation process is is outstanding and um, to me knowing the background that she came from and and all, I think it's been a tremendous success story for her. And um, you, to think in four months from now that she will walk away with her degree it is the most important thing. And it's a, an, just a humongous accomplishment on her part, as well as being an outstanding Pac-12 basketball player. Okay. <clears throat> so what are you having the, two, uh, the team do this week to prepare in practice offensively and defensively? Well, defensively, you know, we're getting ready for the two biggest front lines in maybe in the country and, and some of the best post players, no doubt, in the world. And, and I, I don't say that in jest. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, that, it's that good, you know, and that's part of being in the Pac-12. You have great players like that. But we have to, first of all, we cannot allow both teams to get into their running games. They both will get up and down the floor, and they have a, very, a, a great group of weapons that can score at any time. Uh, but defensively, we've got to get back. We've got to take, you know, take away, extend passing lanes, try to not allow them just to pound the ball inside with – with their tremendous front lines that they have, understanding the fact that they do have great balance outside too. So if you double team, you know, you're going to have to give up something on the perimeter. And, and both teams are just quality teams, both at the perimeter play, at the guard play, and, and obviously in the post. I think, you know, one of the biggest things that they heard all morning in practice is that we have to be able to rebound. We have to be able to rebound with these teams and try to uh, eliminate the second and third shots that, uh, you know, both Stanford and Cal are very used to getting. Um, offensively, I, th I think that, you know, we, we – are out of rhythm a little bit, and uh, we're trying to get back in sync. We're trying to, to move the basketball a little bit more and space the floor and, and get better shots, better shot selection up, and hopefully get second and third shots ourselves. You know, we're a very quick team, and I think that we can we can get back in our running game if we can get the stops, get the rebounding, get in our running game. If not, though, we've got to settle down and be able to to have a better out offensive output. Uh, so, so what are you guys doing to regain the rhythm? Um, first of all, I love my team, and I just love the fact that, you know, they were there. Uh, Martin Luther King was a holiday, it was a great holiday, and uh, it was a non-practice non day, but, uh, you know, the majority of my team was in the gym at, at 6.30 in the morning, you know, on um, Monday, really working hard, and, um, you know, they, they're on the shooting machine, some of them are working on passing, some of them are working on defense. You know, they're not satisfied with the way they're playing individually, nor as a team, and so, but, you know, there, there's, a, you know there's a lot to be said about their character and the fact that they're in there trying to 
trying to improve and get better. I, I think the other thing is we're trying to do more reps in practice on the offensive end of things so that we can get our timing back on our screens and, and making sure that we're pinpoint you know, on our passing and stuff so that when they are open, we're giving them a good pass so that they have a great look at the basket. And then what did you guys uh, notice from you know, the UW game that you're going to focus on a little bit? Um, you know, the UW game, they, they played well, and um, there were some sets offensively that we did not handle well in our defensive scheme, uh, scheme. and um, though, you know, we've already addressed those, we've already you know, been able to look at those and correct those and learn from them, and you, know, and you have to learn from them, and they're painful lessons, but you move on, mm -hmm. because you don't have time in this league to continue to dwell on, on yesterday's news. you got to get ready to make news tomorrow, you know, and, that, and that's what we're trying to do with this road trip. And then um, what do you expect from Stanford and then Cal? Well, Stanford is Stanford. You know, uh, they've been a Final Four forever. <laughs> you know, national champions. They are big. They 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 are big at every position. They they love to pound the ball inside. They they run a lot of triangle. But this year they are running some different offensive sets. Defensively, they've mixed it up a little bit more than what they've done in the past with their traditional man to man. Most of the time, switching defense. So um, you know, it, it uh, pretty comfortable knowing Cal over the years. You know, I was assistant at Stanford when Tara first came came out to Stanford. It seems like like a, you know, a thousand years ago, but um, they're, they're just a quality team and um, you just can't make a lot of mistakes against them on both ends because if you do, they're just going to turn it into points and they can put a lot of points on the scoreboard and that's, that's when they become the most dangerous. All right, thank you, Coach. You're welcome. All right, questions on the line for Coach? we got a couple people in here, so please identify yourself. Good, Jade. You got back safe? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. It was fun. Good, <laughs> good. Um, I do want to ask you, um, there's a couple of long uh, streaks across the nation, um, but the 52 um, with you and uh, Stanford um, is the longest. Does it kind of seem, since you've been in the game for a long time, almost improbable to have a, have a streak like that? Um, you know, that you think that if, you know, at one point you would, um, the teams would have got each other, I mean, you know? Yeah, you, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's a crazy number. There's no doubt about it. And I was uh, I listening to something on TV last night. I don't know all the teams. There's so many, there are some streaks out there in football and men's and women's basketball and professionally and stuff that, that you know, you just kind of scratch your head and say, what the heck? What, you know, what is it and why is it? But, you know, let, let's not lose sight of the fact that Stanford has, uh, you know, one of the best coaches ever in the game with Tara Vanderveer, and she's done a phenomenal job of building that program and maintaining such a high level um, you know, but uh, it, it's uh, you know they're always they're all it's always a very exciting time to match up against a program of that caliber, and at the same time, you know, um, you know it'd be great to have a little more success against them than what we've had, obviously in the 52 or 53 that you're talking about. But you know, our our goal every day is is just like it was last week and the week before, and it will continue to be is to continue to get better and take advantage of our opportunities. If if we do that and can stay healthy. Uh, you know, who knows when these streaks end and new streaks begin. Both Dominion and, um, you know, people keep like Duke, they have all the 47 and the 52 too. So, um, but, you know, Stanford ended Connecticut's 90 game win streak. Is it one of them more impressive than the other? I mean, is it, does it, you know, with the one that's in conference more impressive than a, 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 like Connecticut and someone across the nation, or is that more impressive to you? I'd love to have either one, you know, I'd love to have either one, but, uh, um, yeah, no, it, they, they both, I mean, all of them kind of blow your mind, you know, it, like you said, I've been in the game for a long time. I know a lot of those coaches and programs. I know a lot of the programs that they have continued to have the streaks against and, and it is, it, it's, it's mind blowing, you know, to think how, how well they have played at a consistent level throughout, not just years, but decades. And, you know, hats off. I, I don't think that our women's basketball coaches get enough credit, uh, you know, in the game. And, and uh, certainly, you know, these kind of streaks speak well to, to, to the type of coach that Tara is, Gino, uh, Wendy Larry in the past, Old Dominion, obviously she's retired now, but uh, Wendy did a great job. And, uh, but hats off to that. And I, I, I think it does speak volumes about the quality of coaches in women's basketball at the collegiate level. You're welcome. Coach, hi, this is Rachel Bachman from the Wall Street Journal. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, I don't read your paper, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay, That's right. you don't have to. Okay, all right. Um, I just wanted to follow up on something Jada asked um, about the streak. Do, can 
you can we extrapolate anything from from the streak about um, and and the other sort of continued wide margin scores we see with sort of the upper upper echelon of teams in women's basketball is is this sport still fairly stratified in terms of who has the talent you know I think you, you bring up a good point and I, I think that the fact that in women's basketball um, for a long time you saw you saw the Stanfords the Tennessees you know, UConn came on a little bit a after that, and uh, Texas, you know, uh, gosh, I mean, Louisiana Tech, you know, the programs like that that were traditionally in the Final Four, UCLA, USC, and for a long time, I think that those teams really had the cupboard full of talent. There is no doubt about it, you know. Uh, you look back to USC's days with Cheryl Miller, the McGee, McGee twins, the, Cynthia Cooper, I mean, all four of them on one team, are you kidding me? I mean, I'd take them all right now, you know, at their age, and we'd have a lot of fun. But but I think the game has transi transitioned a little bit, a lot, towards um, the, there being a lot, lot more parity. Uh, certainly, Stanford and UConn, Tennessee, those guys are st still going to get probably the very, very top, top level of student athlete out there. But there are more students athletes out there of high caliber, so there's more to go around. And I think that uh, you know, with, with the coaching that goes on in the game, the TV exposure that's going on with the game is is that the student athletes are, are more likely to look at other schools and want to be a part of other programs because of a lot of other reasons, whether it's academics or making their own tradition or maybe you know location or, or whatever. So I think that the that the there is, you know, we're getting close to having more parity in the game, but you're still going to have those five or ten teams in, in, the, in our country that pretty much just handpick, you know, the best athletes.